Uh, I'm holding Ethereum, Bitcoin, and a few other currencies. Come on, you've got to be somewhere sitting on the yard. You can't be hustling and dustling in one of these conferences. Bitcoin is the religion. Hey guys, this is Catherine Ross from Cointelegraph here at Berlin with Naeem Aslam, who describes himself as crypto enthusiast. Is correct. it correct? Okay, okay. Naeem, you're very experienced in trading, right? From Thank what you. I saw. <laughs> <laughs> And uh, the question, my first question is, can you explain the difference to the readers uh, between technical analysis and fundamental analysis? Well, thank <laughs> you, and it's lovely to be here. Oh. <laughs> I think that the two different things, like if you're a mathematician, then, and you love to read charts, then technical analysis is your thing that you wanted to be focused on. If you like to see the underlying fundamentals, what is actually driving the move, mm -hmm. apart from that zigzag yeah. move that we see it, that's your fundamental analysis. Okay. Which one is more important? Yeah, my next question. You know, like, you know, more relevant to the immature crypto market, I would say. More relevant, more you know, appropriate, I would say. Which one? I'll give you a good thing. Okay. You know what happened during consensus? The price went down. Actually. The price went down. Yeah. What did the technical analysis say? That when consensus event happened last year, the price went up. Yeah. I'm going to write something about that. Oh, you're going <laughs> <you're laughs> to publish it at Coin Telegraph, right? <laughs> uh, maybe, but okay. for sure on the Forbes, I will write it because uh, okay. I would love to. <laughs> okay. Okay. Yes, for sure. Okay. So I think. <clears throat> For technical analysis, it's, it's the history which repeats itself. How long is the history that we have? We have less than, you know, a decade, like maximum from 2012 yeah. to even now, if, if, even if, if, if you call that, but it's good enough. Like I, myself, when I sit on the Bloomberg terminal and I look at different cryptocurrencies, uh, such as Bitcoin, are you holding it? Um, I'm not at liberty to say because I'm a journalist, you know. <laughs> well, I, for the disclaimer, okay. I can. <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> because I do. So do you? <laughs> I, I am. Okay, uh, okay. I'm holding Ethereum, Bitcoin and a few other currencies for disclaimer. Sure. Um, so when I'm looking at the technical analysis by using the Bloomberg terminal uh, and I have different indicators, it can clearly tell me that, okay, look, if you use this particular indicator, on this particular time frame, and I'm sure that the people watching this one, they will understand that like my suit isn't gonna fit anyone else's suit. It's it's a wrong method to just take the indicator and then apply it. It's that's not gonna work. Yeah, fair you enough. You have to customize it, get it tailored. So basically, if it's a 30 minute time frame that you're looking at, an active investor, then there are certain strategies that you can only use in them and back test them. That's what we do. Uh, so do, do, do watch some of the videos that I've done on the Facebook or on the social media. Okay. Okay. I will. <laughs> I'm sure the readers will too. And so um, that might sound like a strange question, but what is the most volatile cryptocurrency you've ever seen? Like, I mean, during two, three years, because I've, you've probably been analyzing a lot, yeah. right? So it's not necessarily Bitcoin, right? Because people are all, you know, they have all eyes on top 10, yeah. obviously, but what is the most volatile so far? I think any ICO which is just out of the door these days is volatile for investors. Mm -hmm. And I would say, and please, this is for disclaimer, this is sure. not an advice, but sure. <laughs> I would suggest that as a newbie, you wanted to play with the crypto, yep. come and then just buy Bitcoin and Ethereum and hold it. Don't go venturing into finding another Bitcoin. That's not that easy to do it. Well, I mean, I've been, you know, I've been holding for three days. I need to do it, you know? <laughs> this is the general. The if, general you, if you use a methodological approach, if you use proper discipline, and if you use the benchmarks, like there is enormous amount of literature and work out there on the YouTube, free media. So use some of them to mm -hmm. teach yourself to download the spreadsheets, measure them against a benchmark, and then perhaps you'll be able to find the next currency which is gonna give you 
a certain multiplier or 45x and then yeah you can retire with your yacht somewhere but for the time being i think as a newbie just stick to the mainstream currencies and i was on the bloomberg the day that the futures got listed for oh, bitcoin in december right? in december yeah, well yes so since then look at the daily range of bitcoin has it increased or is it, is, it, is it more consolidating? That's, that gives you pretty much the answer whether the Bitcoin is becoming a more volatile or whether it's becoming more stable with that respect. Because now we are in a very narrow range of oh, three to four hundred. Yeah, yeah. Like, I think since 2018, it's been pretty, pretty narrow range. After the first few months. Oh, yeah. So should we? OK, that's a difficult question. But should we expect any up movement? Oh, in your I opinion. am bull. I, <laughs> oh, I am completely really? bull. I, okay. I've written something on Forbes, which is Bitcoin is the religion. Uh huh. And so you go by it, right? I like go by it. Okay. I stand behind it. Um, I think if Bitcoin dies, the entire industry would collapse. Okay. It's a commodity now. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. The so complex issue. Yeah. If you want to store your wealth, this is the commodity. If you wanted to take it as a hedge along with other. So when you mean um, look at and think about investing, because this is like a disclaimer, guys. <laughs> so, uh, and hold on, right? So for how long do you think, like for a couple of years to, to establish it as an asset? What do you mean? To hold for how many years? Uh, yes, <laughs> I, think, I think that's a, that's a great question. Like how, what's the time horizon? Yeah. Because I get that question all the time after the conferences. So I would say that, look, you are in for a certain multiplier. You are not in for the VIP shows because if that is what you're in for, then you should probably be a day trader and then get that. But if you are not, let it sit in your portfolio. And I think the upside is, well, the, the, the one calculation that I did, and again, the um, white paper and then the research is published on Forbes on it, is, one Bitcoin could be worth $614,000 in 10 years. Okay, that sounds promising. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> okay. but the worst case scenario for me between now and by the end of September is 13,000 and the best case scenario is 17,000. Well, it could, it could go even more, but I think the worst case scenario we are looking at in between. You really are bullish on this. <laughs> so if Bitcoin is a religion, should we diversify our crypto portfolio? For sure. Mm -hmm. Why? Because you don't put all your eggs in one basket, right? Fair Ethereum. Mm -hmm. Again, not an advice, but suggestion. Uh, I think it's very important. Uh, people who understand the technology and they understand this DAP world, they are more focused on Ethereum. Mm -hmm. I hold okay. more Ethereum than Bitcoin. Bitcoin. Yeah. For obvious reasons, I guess. <laughs> okay, and um, you were involved in the traditional financial trading, right? Yes. And when did you first hear about it? And why did you decide to start trading crypto? Oh, I left. I, I, I left in institutional banking environment the day that I got exposed to Bitcoin. I joined a broker, a firm which was offering CFDs on Bitcoin. Oh. Which is contract of future differences for those who you don't know. Thank you. Um, it's, it's a very interesting environment. So I wanted to learn it. But the question I get asked all the time, if you bought Bitcoin back in 2013, come on, you've got to be somewhere sitting on the yard. You can't be hustling and dustling in one of these conferences. But I'm not hustling and dustling. We're trying to educate people what is the technology is all about. I bought it because of the educational reason. I wanted to understand how it works and what is behind it, how it is going to evolve the world, how it is going to bring the change, change this entire environment that we live in. Because internet, change the world and now it's the blockchain technology. I'm sitting with government officials, I'm speaking in fact at the European Parliament in Brussels on the 6th of June just to talk about this 
the adoption of the blockchain technology, the, the importance of this one. Because right now what we need is we need to educate public, we need to educate regulators, we need to educate with central banks. We need to work with them, not against them. Because governments have introduced initiatives like sandboxes and everything. That's a good initiative. Some governments have taken a step a lot more further than the other governments and then they're getting a better dividend and yield on in that respect. And certain governments are just sitting, okay, let's see how big the mess is going to be and then we will take our stance. So you think governments should embrace the technology and the cryptocurrencies as well with them? Without a shadow of a doubt. Okay, and how would that work? Should they create their own cryptocurrency, which basically wouldn't be decentralized then, right? Centralized digital currency is an idea which is told over and over. And central bankers such as Mark Carney, is known as an unreliable boyfriend, He's been dealing with this one like a revolving door. So one day, a few months ago, they had a different stance. Now they're changing the different stance. I think central banks need to be firm with the answer of what, they, what side they're going to choose. And they're going, they have to let technology take its fate. But within the regulation, I'm, I mean, I'm not saying that by any mean that, okay, just give them a free hand because SEC has already said that if you wanted to see a market, which is not regulated, that's your ICO market. Yeah, it is. Okay, and uh, for those who haven't traded before, any recommendation, I'm not saying advice yeah. in any way, any recommendation on how to start or probably w which exchange or platform to choose or how to choose it. So any word of advice to newbies? First, educate yourself about the technology. Read on all major medias. Uh, that you can get hold of, right? Two, go with an exchange that you feel comfortable with. Look at the volumes on those exchanges, what sort of a volume are they doing? Look at the jurisdictions under which they are trading because that gives you some sort of a, yeah, that's a um, confidence that, okay, that your money would be perhaps saved if anything happened. And choose the platform that you feel comfortable with. But remember, just don't overtrade because cryptocurrencies is a different animal which has higher volatility with respect to Forex, with respect to fixed income, with respect to any derivative that we have out there. These are pink sheet stocks. If you know, for those who don't know pink sheet stocks, it's just a basket of rubbish stocks, but with a huge potential yeah. on the upside because some of them would do really well. Um, so stick with the mainstream currencies, the top two, and choose the exchange which has a higher volume and has better jurisdiction. Oh, well, that sounds very promising. Here, we're here at Berlin with Naeem. That was a pleasure. Thank you very much for taking your time. Thanks for having me. Yeah, thank you. Coin Telegraph. Like, subscribe, and hodl.